let us understand memory stores cycles. Uh, in class, uh, when we discussed about this topic, uh, there were some problems. So here I want to explain uh, that concept clearly. So when we start, uh, we based on this fundamental formula okay, for you know uh, cache memory uh, calculating average memory access time okay. so based on this formula uh, let's first let's look at another formula memory store cycles okay. uh, so here the meaning uh, memory store cycles for what for the whole program because right now, let's think about, we are running a program. Right? When we run this program, how many CPU cycles are used for memory stores? Okay? So that hidden meaning is important to understand this concept. So here, I like to add that, you know, to remind you. So for the current program okay yeah. so we know in the current programs there are this many instructions I see instruction count this means the number of instructions for the current program. Okay? So, for this many instructions, there are this many cycles spent on stall. Okay? So that's the exact meaning. Okay? From that, then, we can get you know, the remaining uh, equations. First, let's look at the equivalent expression of this formula. We just do division, so both sides divided by that IC instruction count, okay, that, that's the same thing of this total number of instructions, okay, so you see this, both sides denominator number of instructions, okay, so this uh, actually uh, in our notes, you can also see this formula. Okay. Next, we want to connect these two formulas. You know, what's the relationship between these two formulas? Okay. So, I write one half of the first formula. Then, I want to bring the, you know, second part for the second half. Okay. How do I replace this question mark? What should I put there? Okay. Uh, in the discussion uh, in the class yesterday, uh, the term I put there was not correct. Okay. So if you uh, wrote the notes, uh, you should correct that part. Okay. So the term I, I need to modify, I need to do some change for the term here. Okay. Before we put the right term, Let's try to understand these two terms first. So then we know uh, how to put the right term there. Okay. Average memory access time. Okay. So what's that? Okay. Average memory access time. Okay. So let's recall the whole procedure that uh, CPU requests a word from cache and the memory okay? yeah, for the whole procedure uh, because CPU uh, sends many requests many okay? so then we do average okay? because you have so many so then uh, each time uh, the number of cycles used uh, could be different. Okay, sometimes hit time, sometimes hit time plus miss penalty. Yeah. 
So now then you do average on all the requests, you get this number. Okay? So that's the original procedure. Okay? Now we interpret this term as okay, average time per memory access. Okay? Yeah, so here I rewrite it in a different way. So interpret it, you know, as from a different point of view. Okay? So here I write it as average time. Okay? So it is a time. Okay? Time per memory access. Okay? So that is its exact meaning. Okay? Why I write it this way? Because here there is a key term it, that is revealed, that is this per memory access. Per. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. When you see that per, you know you need to do division. Okay? So you need to, so you have some total memory access time divided by the total number of memory accesses that will give you per memory access. Okay? Yeah. So you have that in your mind. Okay? Next, let's look at this hit time. What is the hit time? Okay? Hit time. Okay? So we know yeah, the for a cache hit, uh, the time span on a cache hit. Okay? Okay? But if we use this per language, how do we use the per language to interpret the head time? Yeah. Yeah. Using the per language, let's recall the procedure. When do we spend head time? Okay. Actually, for every word requested by the CPU, you need to spend this head time. Okay. No matter it is a cache hit or cache miss, you always need to spend the head time. Okay? So if I use that per language, I can write in this way. Okay? So I just write head time spend per memory access. So this is, you know, another uh, interpretation from different point of view. Okay? Yeah. Because the reason if we use this per language, okay? yeah. so then that will help us to get the last term using that per language. Okay? So that is important to understand the concept. Okay. So now we are ready to write the term here. So what's that? Okay. Because our base here per memory access, per memory access. So here it should also be per memory access. Okay. So that should be memory store cycles. Per memory access. Yeah. So now this is the right way to write relationship, you know, between these two formulas. And uh, the main part. The key part we add here is this per memory access. So this term, this part is important. Okay? We cannot miss it. So that's the reason. So in yesterday's class, when I wrote the formula, I missed this part. Okay? That caused the you know the problem later we encountered. Okay? So now I make it up. Okay. So now we go from here we can do
derived uh, the right formula. Okay. All right, per memory exists. Okay, so now let's take a look at that. Okay, what's the relationship between this term and that term? Okay, you know, per memory exists. What what's the relationship? Okay, so let's write it. Rewrite it. Okay. Memory store cycles per instruction. Right, so here over instructions. Okay, so that's the per instruction. Okay. We need to convert the term from per instruction to per memory access. We need to write like this, memory store cycles okay, over memory excesses times Excesses over instruction. Okay. This is the part per memory access. So this term equals that term. Okay. So now you see okay. it equals that term, so, all right, but we need to get this part, okay, so we need to, you know, divide this term, the other side, you know, so, to get this term, okay, all right, so now you can see, this term should be replaced by memory store cycles, Or instructions times instructions over memory accesses. Okay, so this should be used to replace this part. this term, you know, by that side, okay, okay, all right, now to replace, the last step, okay, last step, We need to do the manipulation about this term. Okay. All right. Last step. Okay. Now we are working on this parenthesis. Okay. Working on this parenthesis. Okay. okay. First, replace this term. Okay. So that is Mrs. instruction okay. Mrs. instructions okay. times Miss penalty okay. so I leave space for the this term okay. so you know far apart Filling this gap 
by this number. Okay? Alright. So, instructions. Memory accesses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So finally, do cancellation. This is over memory accesses. What's that? What is misses over memory accesses? Okay. That is the definition of misread. Okay. So you get so this term okay, equals misread times miss penalty. Okay. So that is our first formula. Okay. So now you can see if we understand it this way, that it matches our original formula. Okay, yeah. so the reason I, you know, do analysis here, we want to establish the relationship between these two formulas to help us understand the concept. Okay. All right. So finally, uh, let me write a conclusion. Okay. Let me write a conclusion based on the, all the analysis here. Let's write our final conclusion. equals misread times mispanel. Okay. Okay. This is our final conclusion. Memory stall cycles per memory access equals misread times mispanel. Next, let's understand this concept for two-level cache version. Okay. First, for two-level cache, we have a average memory access time formula like this. Okay. Our goal is to is explain two-level cache version for the memory store cycle expression okay yeah. all right let's look at the first formula we derived in the first part that's for the single level cache case okay so this is the version for a single level cache case okay similarly we based on the same idea we can write memory store cycles per memory access for two level cache version okay so that's this one okay. that's this one okay. why is that yeah. so let's try to understand this step first let's compare the single level version with the original average memory access time formula okay so this is the original formula okay Let's compare the, these two formulas. In this average memory access time formula, there are two terms. The first term, head time, that corresponds to the CPU execution. The second term corresponds to the memory store part. What memory store? That is the memory store cycles per memory accesses. 
Okay? So that's the exact meaning of the second term. Okay? Similarly, for the two-level cache version, we have a CPU execution part, the head time of L1 execution part. Okay? Then, the remaining part, that corresponds to the memory store cycles per memory accesses. Okay? So that's the remaining part. Okay? So that's the reason we can write the version for two-level cache. Okay. Now, the last step, we want to establish connection between this formula and this formula. Okay, all right. Now, let's rewrite the right-hand side part, okay, using the definition of misrate. Okay. First, let's write like, let's multiply through okay, miss rate L1, okay, local miss rate L1, hit time L2 plus. Okay. Next, multiply through miss rate L1 times miss rate L2. Okay, local miss rate L1 times the local miss rate L2. Okay, that's the global miss rate L2. Okay, so we replace it by the global miss rate L2 times this penalty L2. to use definition for miss rates to write these two expressions okay the first one okay. based on the definition so that is the misses L1, yeah, sorry, not L2, misses L1 over memory accesses. Okay, times head time. L2. Plus, global mystery L2. So based on the explanation uh, yesterday, that is Mrs. L2, okay? So why L2? So you should count global miss rate, uh, misses, okay? global miss, this is global misses. You miss L1 level cache, then you miss L2 level cache, you get a global misses, okay? Over memory, Excesses times miss penalty. L2. Now we have this expression. Okay? This expression. Okay? Memory store cycles per memory excesses equals. Misses L1 misses over memory excesses times head time L2 plus L2 misses over memory excess times miss penalty L2. Okay. From this formula, you can see they have common denominator. Okay. So denominator memory excess is the same. So that means you can multiply memory accesses both sides to cancel memory accesses both sides. Okay? After that, 
Compare with this formula, the only difference is the number of instructions in the denominator. Now, you can put a number of instructions and the denominator to get that formula. Okay? Yeah. So now, you know, uh, the connection between these two formulas. Okay? Yeah. Because for common denominator, you can replace, you know, uh, by different number as the common denominator. Okay? Yeah. All right. So now, finally, the conclusion. The final conclusion. Okay? How to represent memory store cycles for two-level cache case. Okay? Memory store cycles. So if we do not look at the denominator, equals L1 misses times hit time, L2 plus L2 misses times miss penalty L2. Okay, so that's the first, you know, conclusion. Okay. Second conclusion, so if we look at this formula, okay, why we want to write this version, okay, not, you know, using a different way than this version. The reason is, in this version, there is miss rate, you know, local miss rate sometimes, and sometimes we use global miss rate. Okay? So that means to use the, the miss rate version, you have the local miss rate, global miss rate issue. Okay? Yeah. But for this version, okay. Yeah, so the conceptually relatively simpler because you don't have the local global issue. Okay? So you what do you have? Simply Mrs. L1 per instruction, Mrs. L2 per instruction. So conceptually it is relatively simpler. All right, so that is the, you know, all the details about memory store cycles.